So trying to get as much different color is probably the easiest way to guarantee that you're getting all the different sorts of vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals. We love a rainbow. And we love uh, a rainbow, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you've not seen the last two videos I've done, I've gone through goal number one, goal number two of Tom's Daily Goals. But today, I am with Dr. Rupi, author of The Doctor's Kitchen for goal number three, and that is immunity. So, Dr. Rupi is an expert in immune boosting foods, <laughs> among other things as well. But what do you think is the most important thing that we can do every day to try and have some level of immunity? Um, so it's really about nutrient dense food. So trying to get as much different color is probably the easiest way to guarantee that you're getting all the different sorts of vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals. We love a rainbow. And we love uh, a rainbow, yeah. It's good. It's good. Getting all those different sort of plant chemicals into your diet because those have anti-inflammatory effects, they have immune boosting effects, and they have effects on your gut as well. And that's very important for immunity. So for those people, I have been guilty of this in the past, who just take, have taken supplements and trying to get all the vitamin C and all the things that we need from a normal diet through pills, like what are the things that we should be eating every day to nip that in the to bud? To nip it in the bud. Yes. Um, so really, it's a, in, in a protective role, we want to try and eat nutrient-dense foods uh, to to uh, protect us against ever having these sorts of viral illnesses, although that's gonna happen regardless because we get stressed, we get poor sleep, and that's gonna lower our immunity. So apart from having nutrient-dense foods and all the different colors of the rainbow, we wanna try and get things like nuts and seeds. These are plant-based proteins, but they also contain minerals like selenium and zinc. And you might have heard that you know people take supplements quite a bit, yes. like zinc and magnesium, all the rest of it. And there are some small-scale studies showing that it reduces the severity and duration of certain types of viral illnesses, but we can get these sorts of ingredients and these sorts of minerals from our food, like nuts and seeds. Okay, great. Yeah. I mean, and also they're good snacks. Instead of having a chocolate bar, you can have a handful of nuts, exactly. some fruit, some veg. I mean, we've got loads of fruit and veg all over yeah, the kitchen. It's all over the kitchen. Right in two now. random piles, which yeah. we really, really like. So, I mean, of these foods that we've got here, yeah. what what ones are rich in vitamin C? What things should be doing? Which what is good for what? So we've got bell pepper, for example. It's one of my favorite ingredients. You can okay. use it raw, you can roast it, or you can um, uh, just use it as a dressing as well. It's a great source of vitamin C. Um, we've also it. got things like tomatoes, source of lycopene, which is an antioxidant. Again, that's an immune boosting food. Wow, big um, word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lycopene. Um, and you've got <laughs> apple as well. So apple uh, contains a chemical called quercetin, as does um, onion and garlic. And these are all, again, different sorts of plant chemicals that have been shown to improve your immunity and it's about really getting variety because all these things in conjunction they have different sorts of fibers they give variety to your your diet as well and that's very good for the function of your gut microbiome and it's oh. the population of microbes that live in and around your body larger in your gut and that is a very very important part of your immune defense and is that when you can get some kind of like you know when you get heartburn and stuff is that the acidity in your stomach sometimes <laughs> doing all kinds of horrible things it can do yeah that's separate to uh, the gut microbiome which is actually lower down in your digestive tract like okay. in a large colon um, but yeah like acidity that's a common complaint I see as a GP and there's yes. lots of different reasons why that happens as well okay good and then in terms of how many fruit and veg that we have got on the side in these two lovely yeah. piles how many should we be eating and what is the ratio that should be between Fruit and veg. And veg, yeah. yeah. Um, so officially the guidelines are five a day, but really if you can get more than that, then the better. And for the same reasons, getting variety is good for your gut microbiome, getting variety of different colors is again, making sure, ensuring that you're getting a good collection of the different chemicals, vitamins and minerals that you find in fruits and vegetables. And uh, yes, there is an argument about how much fruit versus how much veg. I would err on the side of the veg, in particular dark green leafy vegetables, because those are the probably best shown to have those anti-inflammatory and immune boosting properties. Mm. But that's not to say that you can't enjoy apples and, and bananas and pineapple as well in moderation. Yeah, at least that natural sugar. Like if you're gonna reach for something sweet, reach for something like 
piece of fruit. Exactly. And we should be enjoying these sorts of sugars and sweeteners because it's, you know, part of the elixir of life and, you know, it's, it's exactly. a very enjoyable part of You can't life. just make yourself eat just spinach for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, so you have yeah. to have a little bit of sweetener yeah, too. Yeah. I even like adding like fruit to some salads as well, like mm. nectarines, yeah. um, you know, putting that with spinach and extra virgin olive oil. It adds a little bit of sweetness, but also, you know, actually complements the, the leafy greens. In well. Florida once actually, I had this salad that had oranges and it also had strawberries in it with balsamic vinegar nice. and it was yeah, like yeah. really good you wouldn't put it together but no, it does actually it works work. yeah i think there was even grapes in it once yeah. and i was like what is going on yeah. like why are these fruit in... why are there grapes in my salad? it's a fruit salad but it's got chicken on it like i don't understand so yeah i mean yeah. It, that's one thing though when you travel a lot too traveling can play havoc with your immune system yeah. and I travel a lot and obviously I get to a competition and I need to be in peak form yeah. and you know I can't be on the end of the board worrying about a runny nose and snot yeah. going in the pool everywhere <laughs> so like I mean yeah. what are your like tips on like traveling in terms of food and what you can do to try and not get that horrible yeah. cold when you get off the plane so certainly trying to protect your microbiome with getting lots of fiber in your diet is, is one thing so making sure you're getting things like beans legumes pulses that sort of stuff to build up your stores nutrient dense food again like we're saying lots of vitamin c uh, containing foods uh, lots of different things like dark meat leafy vegetables if you can particularly on the plane yes. you want to try and rest as much as possible now there's the temptation to like watch all the movies yeah. You know, yeah there's so many and um you want to try and rest as much as possible and, and that's the most difficult thing because you're putting your your circadian rhythm out of balance yeah and that is going to lower your immunity anyway mm -hmm. so there's only a few things that we can do but what we do have in the locus of control we can try yeah i mean i have a bit of a talent of being able to sleep anywhere <laughs> <laughs> but on a plane i think yeah the most important thing that i found and to try and be uh, arrive refreshed is a lot of water i try to have like a liter of water for every three hours in the air mm -hmm. and then sleep as much as possible as much as possible yeah hydration is very important on planes for sure how much would you recommend for someone to drink each day is it like two to three liters or two to three liters is a general amount uh it really depends on like you know your convenience your medical issues and that kind of stuff of but generally like you know eight glasses a day two liters throughout the whole day as well i actually got into the habit um because when i was a junior doctor yes you know it's hard to always drink water throughout the whole day so i drink like at least somewhere between 750 to a litre of water in the morning and the first hour. Okay. And that would, you know, keep me you know, hydrated. hydrated, at least for the first half of the day anyway. Mm. But uh, obviously that means you go to the toilet quite often. Yeah, <laughs> so. I mean, I do find that I drink, a lot, I drink a lot of water and I do find myself going to the loo quite often. Yeah. I mean, I love how we've gone from food to loo, but <laughs> I feel like that is something that's very British. Like that's all we talk about. <laughs> yeah. The loo, the weather <laughs> and food. So we've got it all in. So thank yeah, you for coming down right. today. <laughs> for enlightening us all about immune boosting foods, what we can do to stay healthy, fit and strong, and most importantly, happy. So thank you for coming down today, and make sure you are subscribed, because tomorrow we're gonna to be doing goal four, but we've got so many different goals throughout this whole week because of Tom's daily goals. But if you wanna know more about Dr. Rupi, make sure you check out the Doctor's Kitchen. All the details for it will be in the description box below. But for now, we will see you next time for more from Tom's Daily Goals.